Hello Sagittarius. These are the predictions for the year of 2024 for a Sagittarius rising or ascendant. And you can also take these predictions to account if you have a Sagittarius moon. So this applies mainly to the ascendant, but also to the moon sign of Sagittarius. So I'll be discussing long-term effects throughout the year. Uh, this is not a month to month analysis uh, that is more detailed and I'll be doing monthlies and weeklies so you can check those out for month to month predictions and weekly predictions these are just general predictions based on the slow moving planets not including the outer planets of Uranus Neptune and Pluto However, I will talk about the ingress of Pluto into Aquarius because an ingress or an entering into another sign, changing of signs of Pluto is kind of a big deal. Um, but the outer planets stay in a sign for a very long time. So they only affect you uh, subtly and internally unless they are hitting a personal planet or a house cusp in your natal chart. Okay, so uh, these are mainly has to do with Saturn, Jupiter, the moon's nodes, and the apogee and perigee of the moon. All of those move very slowly. Saturn is two and a half years, and the apogee and perigee is nine months. Okay, so they have a big effect on what happens during the year and the most important events of the year and uh, how the most important psychological and emotional growth during the year okay so i'm going to start with saturn so for a sagittarius ascendant saturn is currently transiting pisces which is your fourth house and the job of saturn is to get rid of things okay that's one job another job is to uh, focus on what is most important and let go of anything that is not part of who you are, part of your kingdom, and that is just a waste of time, basically, a waste of your energy because Saturn gets rid of waste. Okay, that's Saturn rules garbage and the colon in the body. And if you don't throw out the garbage, you get sick. Okay, so, um, <laughs> So that's Saturn's job. And then Saturn is also designed to give you something very long term after you have cleaned house, so to speak. OK, so when Saturn is transiting your fourth house, you this is can be a time where you don't feel that emotionally perky. All right. <laughs> Uh, because the fourth house is a house of emotional security and emotional happiness. It's our attitude about our past, our personal past, and also how we relate to the wisdom of the past and how we interpret that into our daily lives. Now, on a mundane level, the fourth house has to do with our home, the building, the actual place where we live, any vehicles we have, and uh, any type of lakes, ponds, swimming pools, or hot tubs, okay? That's in the realm of the fourth house. And then, of course, it's our mother. It, it rules the person, the body of the mother. And so when Saturn transits the fourth on a mundane level, it can cause some sickness with the mother. She may not be as healthy or you can be separated from the mother for whatever reason. Uh, also, it can cause um, you get rid of uh, certain things in your house. You may have to repair old things, things that are old and breaking down in your house or in one of your vehicles that includes cars, but it doesn't have to be a car. It can be a boat, a bicycle, a skateboard, whatever gets you from point A to point B. And you... Um, because Saturn also rules things that are old, all right? So you may find that you have to be doing some repairs on those things or just want to get rid of them because they're too much energy and a waste of time and uh, move on to something else, all right? Uh, now, in the realm of... Um, in the realm of the internal realm of the 
fourth house, which is the emotional security and, mo and emotional happiness. What this usually does is it separates you from certain attitudes about your past. And you may find yourself reminiscing about the past in a way that is uh, not productive or that, you know, doesn't makes you feel bad. Okay. Uh, or you may dwell on hurtful things that happened in the past. And the reason that is done is because it's designed to have you let it go. Okay. You, you can think about things that hurt you in the past or people that hurt you or events or situations that were traumatic and allow it to be purged from your psyche. All right. That is the job of Saturn because it no longer belongs. It doesn't belong to you anymore. Saturn is here to show you what doesn't belong. And if there are things that are upsetting you, it's time to heal those things and let them go. Okay. You can also, uh, carry a lot of, um, or have, well, okay. So the fourth house is a house of moksha or enlightenment or liberation. It's a water house. So it's a house of happiness along with the eighth and the 12th, the fourth, eighth and 12th that correspond to cancer, Scorpio and Pisces are, is a house of liberation where we liberate ourselves through letting go of, um, through, you know, cleansing our emotional body and letting go of things that no longer belong and need to be forgotten and let go of. Okay. And so we can do that a lot through reading about mystics of the past and how they did it or spiritual teachers of the past. And they write down their experiences and we learn from those things and we apply those principles to modern everyday life. So that's another meaning of the fourth house. Fourth house is when you go to church or satsang or, you know, you go and hear people talk about uh, their journeys, their metaphysical journeys, and you learn from those things and to try to apply those principles in your life today. That's the fourth house. So Saturn will have you let go of some of those teachings that don't seem to serve you and aren't really working for you because you are the, you are the ultimate judge of those things. You know, intuitively, you don't need other people to tell you all the time. They can guide you and point you in a direction, but that's it. Then you have to integrate it into your emotional foundation. If it doesn't belong, it's time to get rid of it. But what is left over, you will carry with you for the next cycle of Saturn, which is almost 30 years, basically 29 years. Okay. So it's a big deal <laughs> that those emotions that are left over that emotional foundation that you work from is designed to support you emotionally for the next 29 years. So, the, and, and the angles are always very important, extremely important. Fourth house is an angle. It's your emotional foundation, the relationship with your mother, which is the first person that you, you bonded with, you know, when you were an infant. So, so transits through the fourth house are always very important, especially with Saturn. There's no reason to beat yourself up and tell yourself you have to be cheerful or happy, you can go ahead and feel if you don't feel, if you feel down, if you feel depressed about the past, it's okay to do that. Okay. It's designed for a specific reason. This transit is designed to help you purge some emotional baggage pretty much. Okay. The bottom line. <laughs> Uh, 
So just keep that in mind and see what Saturn does is, is gives you the long term leftover thing that will last and stay with you. And that is really and truly a part of you. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about the moon's nodes, Rahu and Ketu, or the north and south node of the moon. Their transits are also extremely important and give long term effects. Okay, so the moon's nodes of Rahu and Ketu, uh, the north node is also called Rahu. That's the name in Indian astrology. Rahu is currently in the sign of Aries and will be there the entire year of 2024, which is your fifth house. And Ketu is in the sign of Libra, will be there the entire year. They're always opposite, exactly opposite each other. So these are very important. I'll start with the north node Rahu being in your fifth. All right, so what Rahu does is to, it, it's like going on a quest, basically. You, you know, the hero's quest, like the quest for the Holy Grail or the quest for the Golden Fleece or something like that. Okay, so you, you go on this quest in life to learn more about yourself and to also perfect the area that it, that where the South Node is. Okay, because that's what you ultimately want to do. And so the fifth house has to do with creativity. Basically, it's the biggest creative house. Uh, well, probably on par with the ninth house. Both the fifth and the ninth are very strong creative houses. The fifth house rules children, which are basically creations. But it's your creative intelligence, your creative ambition, in anything you want to create and creating is the ultimate happiness being creative and it really is the the key to uh, true contentment and us uh, and another one is following your inspiration but that's the ninth house okay so but uh so Rahu is going to have you want to create Okay, you're wanting to create, you're wanting to make something original and unique and is part of you that comes out of you that is self expressive. You're going to do that in very different ways than you have before. That's what the North Node does. It gives new experiences with something. It will also give new experiences with your children. Okay, your children may be acting odd or different or weird or they just uh, that's what Rahu does. You know, it gives us things we're not used to. So, um, so if you have kids, you can expect that. And, um, and then the fifth house has to do with investments. So if you are an investor, if you like to invest, a good thing to invest in would be anything that is foreign. Okay, Rahu rules foreigners and foreign countries, foreign currency. Okay, so um, so that that will give you gains when Rahu moves through the fifth. Another thing is spiritual techniques. The fifth house is spiritual techniques, like doing mantras, uh, moving the energy in the body, prayer. You know, um, uh, what else? Uh, chanting, all of that stuff. And if, if it's a technique to reach a different state of consciousness, that is the fifth house. The different state of consciousness is the 12th house, but, but the technique to get there is the fifth, okay? So as Rahu transits or K2, sorry, the North Node transits the fifth house of Aries, you may change your spiritual techniques in some way, or they may become more occult or weird or, you know, uh, strange. Rahu rules the strange, weird, the taboo. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, but the main one is the creative intelligence, using that, developing that, developing what comes out of you more than what other people are teaching you. Another thing the fifth house represents is education. So it you can may you may want to go back to school or learn something online. And it's not really a skill. The, that's the third house. It's more 
you learn for, um, you know, abstract ideas or th theoretical philosophies or uh, you just learn to enrich yourself and to activate your creative juices, okay? Rather than learning how to do something like a skill. Uh, so expect new experiences in that. Expect new desires around those things. And by following Rahu, by following that position for the next year, you're able to perfect and get an unlimited perspective about the position of the South Node, which is in Libra, your 11th house. And so the, the position of the South Node is where you want perfection. It's where you want to have an absolute concrete perfection. Okay, the South Node works in absolutes. The South Node gets critical and, and scrutinizes because it wants perfection. So you're going to want perfection in the realm of your, your social life and your social network. Uh, and, you know, how you are perceived socially. You're going to want perfection in how people give you respect and recognition. The 11th house is the house of love received. So being respected, being recognized, being appreciated for your actions. That's the 10th house is your actions. The 11th house is the gain of the 10th house. Okay. So you may feel like you're not getting the respect or you're not getting it in the way you, you want because you have a limited perspective about it. And the way to remedy that is to go to the house where the North Node is, the fifth house, and be a creative dynamo, okay? Do your spiritual techniques, take a risk and invest in something. Uh, indulge in self-expression. That's another fifth house thing. Through doing that, you're going to get a, a an unlimited perspective of what it means to be appreciated and be loved for your actions and what it means to cr climb the social ladder. All right. Another thing that the 11th house rules is gain or it's gains in general, just all types of gains, but also long-term goals and long-term desires. So you may feel like you're falling short of satisfying your long-term goal or long-term desire. Again, the way to do that is to just concentrate on your creative juices and creative ability. So, um, so it's a seesaw back and forth all year of 2024 between these two nodes. And, um, and it's, it's, it's part of your evolution for this year of 2024. That's what the nodes represent both of them. Now, a lot of astrologers will say you need to move away from the South Node because it's over, it's done. That's not true. <laughs> what we ultimately want is the South Node. We want perfection there. And we, after it's perfect, then we can move on and it's been completed, but that rarely happens. So at, during this year, you're building that different perspective on, on that south node position in your 11th house. So for Jupiter, so Jupiter right now is currently in Taurus, your sixth house, and will be there until May 25th of 2024, and then move into your seventh house of Gemini. So Jupiter being in the sixth house usually can cause some problems, disagreements with spiritual teachers, uh, spiritual mentors. It, it can cause some getting into debt, okay? Uh, because the sixth house is debt, Jupiter is money. Um, it can cause some disagreements with your children. And, um, but generally speaking, it's really good for health. You can get really healthy. You can find new ways of improving your health and, and, and improving your vitality. It can also show you new ways of, uh, working efficiently and effectively the best way to do your work the fastest way to do your work uh, because the sixth house has to do with 
the everyday grind, okay? Paying attention to details, doing your work, and, um, and also, you know, producing from your work. So Jupiter can really make you efficient at doing that while it transits the sixth house, all right? Um, and improving your health quite a bit. The sixth house is also a house of wealth, all right? It's an earth house or artha house, as they call it in Indian astrology. And um, it corresponds to the sign of Virgo, all right, which is in the northern hemisphere, the place of the harvest, where everybody went to work in the old days. So uh, it does give wealth after hard work. Okay, <laughs> uh, so um, so that's a, a good, good thing about the Jupiter transiting the sixth. Now, after May 25th, Jupiter will move into your seventh house. This is a big time for relationships, huge time for relationships, um, because Jupiter always gives a lot of opportunities, gives a lot of luck, uh, gives a lot of happiness and joy with that area usually that they're that he's transiting okay and because the seventh house is an angular house it really kind of lights up all the other areas of your chart and it will also be helping with your fourth house saturn all right but if you're not in a relationship you'll probably get into one if that's what you want all right uh after May 25th. It's, it will be in your seventh house until next May of 2025. But this whole, the rest of the year of 2024, it's a good time to um, get into a relationship if you're not in one. Now, if you're already in one, then the relationship with the partner improves quite a bit. There's a lot of opportunities that come from your relationship. There's a lot of, uh, of, um, the happiness and joy there you know you find discover new things about your partner and how you want to connect with your partner if you're not in a relationship it'll show you how to connect with other people how to become more popular how to connect with the public because the seventh house is the public and it's also the way we connect with people what we share with other people you know the give and take of dealing with any type of person, you know, any type of relationship, we become more popular. All right. We have opportunities through other people. We have opportunities through the public. Also, this is a good time for your business. If you're a business person, or if you're thinking of opening a business, this is a wonderful time to do it. After May 25th of 2024, you're going to have a lot of opportunities. You can even get a really nice business partner. If you want to travel to foreign countries or live in a foreign country, move to a foreign country, this is probably the time that that will happen. Okay. Uh, in the, in the Vedic system, the seventh house is the house of traveling to foreign countries. It's a little different than Western and Western. It's the ninth house, but the ninth house is also travel, but travel to learn about a different culture. The act of traveling out of your country into another country is the seventh house. All right. Uh, so that can happen and you will benefit quite a bit from that. You'll benefit from living in a foreign country or going to a different country. You'll benefit from foreigners. So, um, so that's the rest of the year for Jupiter. Okay. So now we're moving on to the apogee and perigee of the moon. Not enough attention is paid to these. These are very important points. They are not exactly polar or they are not exactly opposite each other like the nodes are, but um, very rarely do they get there. Um, but they're kind of close to being exactly opposite. Okay, but not always. And what they are is the apogee is where the moon is farthest from the earth. The perigee is where it's closest to the earth. The apogee is also known as black moon Lilith. And the per perigee is known as the white moon or Priapus. And so the apogee and perigee mean something a little different. There's still the same concept, but they mean something a little different in transit than they do in the natal chart. 
and they usually are in a sign for roughly nine months. Okay, so the gestation of a human being, basically. And so they give long-term effects and they're very important. So right now you have the Apogee, which is um, in your 10th house of Virgo, and it will remain there until J June 29th, in which time it goes into your 11th house and conjoins K2, your south node in the 11th. But um, so what the Apogee does is it makes you see the big picture. You gain a lot of wisdom from where the Apogee is. You see all of the connections to different parts of your life to where the Apogee is, in this case, the 10th house. So you're going to be seeing the big picture around your career. You'll gain a lot of wisdom around your power and influence around your reputation and the actions that you do. You'll understand how the actions that you do affects all the other areas of your life, all the other houses, so to speak. Okay. So, um, it's usually a place where you just gain a lot of wisdom because you're able to see the big picture. Then after June 29th, the Apogee will move into your 11th house. And so you will be very focused on that, those 11th house issues that I was talking about when I was talking about the South node in your 11th house, you're going to be able to gain a lot of perspective and uh, gain wisdom around your social networks, the respect you're getting, the recognition you're getting for your actions, uh, your salary, you know, the, um, your long-term goals and long-term desires. You'll see how those connect to the other areas of your life and how the 11th house issues influence the other areas of your life. All those things I just mentioned. Now the perigee is currently in Pisces with Saturn. It will be there until March 31st, then go into Aries, your fifth house next to Rahu and be there until November 10th. And then we'll move into Taurus, your eighth house, or sorry, your sixth house. So right now it's in your fourth and what the perigee does is it makes you dive very deeply into the particulars of something to really get into the details of something. This is in your fourth house next to Saturn. Those fourth house issues that I was talking about with Saturn are your emotional security, your emotional happiness, your emotional foundation, your connection to your personal past and to your mother. So you'll really be able, able to dive deep and take apart and, and see all the different parts of your emotional makeup and what makes you happy. You'll be able to dissect those things and get rid of what doesn't belong in the parts that work. You become an expert at how to be happy and how to have a strong emotional foundation. And that is, uh, that in that sense about getting rid of some of the, the particulars that don't fit in that sense, the perigee is close to Saturn or has the same type of uh, function. It can also make you dissect your relationship with your mom, all right, or a mother figure. Also about where you want to live or the, where you live now. You may get into the way your house works, you know, that and all of the particulars and details of your home. That is actually uh, um, the mundane expression of the fourth house, okay, or the worldly expression. Okay, so then on March 31st, the perigee moves into Aries, which is your fifth conjoining Rahu. So you'll dive deeply into the details of your creative expression and figure out the particulars of your uh, spiritual techniques and your investments and your relationship with your children and how your children work. You'll get become an expert at those things. Uh, and then, of course, again, you'll dissect what needs to be kept and what needs to be released or what isn't part of it. You become such an expert at how things work that you see what is frivolous and 
taking away energy and efficiency in that area of life. Then the perigee moves into the sixth house on November 10th, so another month and a half, so to speak, or, or thereabouts, the last part of the year of 2024, and that is your health. Okay, so always a big focus on health this year and getting healthier. You're going to become an expert at your health and uh, also how you solve problems, how you overcome your competitors, how you defeat your enemies, how you follow steps and follow the rules. And then you will dissect it as usual and only keep the parts that work. Okay, for for Pluto's ingress into Aquarius, which is your third house. Now, this is a very subtle thing. It's very subtle. It's very internal. The the uh, the outer planets aren't going to show up very much unless they're touching one of your personal planets or a house cusp. But I'm talking about this because Pluto moves into Aquarius and then will move back into Capricorn around the end of the year and then move back into Aquarius and be there for the next 20 years. So it's a it's a very long transit. So it's very subtle. It's very internal. But what Pluto does is make th it ends things. Psychologically, there's an end to something. OK, and I mean a serious end, like you die and you wake up and you're a mermaid in the ocean. right? <laughs> So it completely ends something and it, it does it in a psychological manner. That's why there's a lot of fear around Pluto's position. And, um, and what happens in the outside world is really dependent on the planet Sun through Saturn. But when Pluto moves into Aquarius, which is your third house, there's a certain psychological ending of the way you learn. All right, that's that's the third house, how you learn you know, how the world works, your initiatory instructions, that's what they call it in the Indian system. And uh, there's an ending to, you know, your how you deal with your associates, like your neighbors, your coworkers, your teammates, if you're on a team, anybody in a group you're with, uh, how you relate to those people, there's a psychological ending to that over the next 20 years. And, um, and also to your siblings, you know, how you psychologically relate to your siblings, emotionally relate to them. And there is also a ending to how you strategize and use your willpower and how much courage you employ. All right. So there is a, there is a psychological ending to some facets of those things. OK, over the next 20 years. But again, it's very subtle and you don't really feel it unless it starts touching those personal points. So I just brought it up because Pluto ingresses into Aquarius and an ingress is always a big deal when when an outer planet does it. OK, so those are the predictions for a Sagittarius for the year 2024. Thank you for watching. Bye.